Welcome to the Math Rebel, everyone. I'm your host, Daniil. This week we're talking about imprecision, specifically whether you can rely on Chazal's estimations of pi at 3 and root 2 at 1.4 that we discussed last week. As we talked about in the first episode last week, these constants apply in buying and selling fields, in Erevin, in Sukkah, and in Klaim, among other areas of Halacha. Speaking of approximations, I'm guessing that those of you who keep first half of Sphera have about 20 seconds of music coming in about 5 seconds, so you might want to mute your speakers. Sorry, I was wrong. That was only 17 seconds of music and three and a half seconds until you had to mute it. I hope that didn't cause anyone harm with those. Anyway, back to our regular scheduled programming. Before we go into what the post can say about pi equals 3 and root 2 equals 1.4, I'd like to address a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah. It says that you rely on Chazal's numbers no matter what. Thus, if even a Kortav is removed from a 40 saw mikvah, it's possible. If, on a square cushion, even a hair is missing from the requisite 3x3 three three tefachim, it won't transmit tome of ice sitting upon it. If, in an egg, even a sesame seed is missing, it won't transmit tome from eating. Why, you ask, are these true? You just don't question the rabbis. They know what they're talking about, even if we have no clue what they're talking about or what we're talking about. I just hope you all know what I'm talking about right now. Assuming you understood what was going on back there, what I was talking about. Just keep this Gemara in the back of your mind as we go through this episode. Say that you hold like the Sefer Chanach, excuse me, that was fairly disrespectful to the Sefer to drop it like that. I'm probably going to get, dang it, there we go, that was my fourth Sefer. Anyway, say you hold like the Sefer Chanach. He says in discussing the mitzvah of balanced weights from this past week's parsha, that you can't rely on these measurements where they might harm someone financially. You can only estimate that pi equals 3 and root 2 equals 1.4, where it won't harm anyone, such as Tchum Shabbos and Klai. Now, from last week's episodes, we discussed the debate between the Tuzerosh and the Archa Shochan as to the Gemara's question about how we know that a circumference of a circle with a diameter of 1 is 3. The Tuzerosh had explained the Gemara as asking that since pi does not equal 3, how do we know that we can rely on this estimation in practical halacha? And the Archa Shochan had explained that since pi does not equal 3, that yields a diameter of less than 1. So how do we know that this Korah is kosher? Perhaps they argue about this very issue, about whether you can rely on this approximation. The Tosa Rosh would hold that you can rely on this approximation, and the Archa Shochan would hold that you can't. As for their opinions on root 2 equals 1.4, it's possible that the Tos Harash would hold that you could rely on it, and it's possible that he wouldn't. Since Pi is a Pasuk, there's more of a reason to rely on that approximation, as we saw with the Magad Mishnah last week. So maybe he would use the same logic by root 2 equals 1.4, and maybe he wouldn't, and would say that you still could rely on that. But the Archa Shochan, who said that you can't even rely on pi equals 3, would certainly say that you can't rely on root 2 equals 1.4. Speaking of the Magen Mishnah, excuse me, let me just clear out that Rambam. Um, so the, speaking of the Magen Mishnah, perhaps the same issue is at play with the two explanations of the Tashbates. According to the first explanation, that their Halachos Moshe Misenai, Maybe they could you could rely on these approximations, but according to the second understanding that we use the Magen Mishnah to explain, you could use pi equals three, but not root two equals one point four because of the above Magen Mishnah. Of course, we talked about this all last week. If you missed that episode, Chas I highly encourage you to go check it out. And we're still not done with last week's episode. Let me bring back that Rambam. He said that no matter where you estimate pi, it's going to be wrong, so you might as well stop at 3. Thus, the Rambam would seem to hold that you could rely on both pi equals 3 and root 2 equals 1.4, since you could use the same argument for the latter estimation. But it's not so simple. The Rambam also says in Hilchos Gneva 
that people view even an inch of land as if it's full of all sorts of crops, a metaphor that means people are extremely careful with their lands. It seems you would actually agree with the Sefer Chanach, that although you might as well chop off the number anywhere, you should hold back the knife as long as possible to save people property that's rightfully theirs. The Sma points out that the Shulchan Aruch uses the same language as the Rambam, implying that they agree on this point. The Gemara Menachos says that Ihlach Moshe Misinai binds everyone to have their tefillin be square. Get it? Binds, because we're talking about tefillin. Don't forget, the fact they had to explain the pun means that it was bad. So how square do your tefillin have to be? Do you need to use all sorts of fancy math tools to ensure that it's square? Rav Moshe Feinstein says otherwise. Root 2 equals 1.4 is close enough. He quotes the briskerov as saying that to be mahodar, it should be as square as possible, but he highly doubts that the brisker actually says such a thing, that in Rav Moshe's words it makes absolutely no sense. That said, even the brisker sounds like he agrees you could rely on these constants, just that ideally you shouldn't. To summarize, we have four general opinions that we've seen. You can't rely on these constants at all. You could rely on them. You could rely on them except where it could cause someone a loss of money. Or you could rely on pi equals 3, but not root 2 equals 1.4. The Sefer Chinuch held of the category on the left. The Tosarash, we weren't sure where he fell out, if he was in the middle or on the right. And we said that the Arach HaShulchan clearly held of the top category. Of the Tash Beit's two opinions, we had proposed that the Halach Lomosh Misinai Tzad held of the middle category, while the Tzad that, is j that the approximations are just to help understand the Sugya held of the category on the right. The Rambam and the Shulchan Aruch seem to have held of the left category. And Rav Moshe Feinstein seemed to hold of the middle category, and the Brisker seemed to hold that B'dyeved, you could rely on these estimations, but L'chatzchila, you shouldn't. Now, it's noteworthy that given that everyone in the middle category said their piece by non Chosh and Mishpat issues, the Tashbeis and the Tosarash by Ervin, and Rav Moshe and the Brisker by Tefillin, it's possible that they agree with the Sefer Chanach as well. Thus, Halach Lamaisa, you, unless you have a specific posik that you hold like, the majority seems to be in favor of either using both constants everywhere or only using both constants in non Chosh and Mishpat issues. To address the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah, if you hold of the middle category, there's no issue. And if you hold the side categories, even in the Gemara, we say that there's an exception to almost every rule. But if you hold of the top category, why shouldn't we rely on the, uh, the Rabban by these estimations? The obvious answer is that they're just that, estimations. We only hold the Rabban's figures when they're exact. But perhaps you could also answer that they were talking about amounts, about quantities. Here we're talking about constants, which are a completely different ballpark. Quantities change depending on what you're dealing with. Constants are, well, constant. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and please like, subscribe, and comment if you did. As always, I've included my sources in the video's description, and feel free to check them out. Next week, we'll address a troubling issue regarding the Meshkan, one that could topple it over if done improperly.